Welcome to BISBtrainings.com. My name is Neeraj and today I'm going to show you an interesting example from Python Natural Language Processing Toolkit. We'll find an antonym and synonym of a given word. For the sake of simplicity, I have used a static value. In a subsequent example, we can use parameter and make our entire code dynamic. So let's get started. In this example, I'm going to use a WordNet library. So the step word first, you import NLTK and WordNet. So WordNet, as you see by the definition, is a large collection of words and vocabulary from English language and that are related to each other in some way. They are grouped in some way. And in turn, under this WordNet, I would be using lemmas. Through lemmas, we'll read the subnet name. And as we move next to the slide, I'm going to show you how it is being used. As you see in this example, it's a collection of words and vocabulary from the English language. So you have a motorcycle which is uh, further divided or it appears like in hierarchy. So your motor vehicle, it's motor car, go kart, and motor car in turn divided into hashback, compact, and gas guzzler. So WordNet, you can assume, appears like in hierarchy, and we would read all the synonym in this fashion. So let's start doing it practically as well. So I'm going to open my Python 3.7 IDE and import NLTK and WordNet. Okay, so step one, let's import NLTK and then I'm going to import WordNet. WordNet from NLTK dot corpus that is step one step second i'm going to create two array called antonym and synonym separately so that we can collect antonym and synonym of a given word so let's create an array you can give any name this empty array so i'm going to give a name called array synonym it's an empty array therefore leave this this is empty an array antonym right next step i would like to retrieve all the values for a given word so i use over here a function called wordnet dot synonym set which is written like s y n s e t s under parenthesis you pass a, you pass a string so i'm going to show you what does it return so before we use this let's this with the value over here, wordnet dot synonym set. And you pass over here some static. I'm going to pass a string, very common word called good, so that when I run this, you can see what is going to be an output. Let's save it first. So I name it synonym, try example one. So when you run this, for good, you see all the synonym and antonym as well. It takes a little time to process. And once it is processed, I, I'm going to browse through each member one by one. Well, this is not the way we wanted an output. You see goods, good dot and dot zero one. It's a kind of hierarchy view, right? And then the different meaning of good are being shown over here, full, adapt, dear, and so on. But the way we want to display in a very simplified English language, so I'm going to browse through all by using for loop. I use a variable called over here with synonym in wordnet dot synonym set. I just pass this. So we'll browse through each member one by one through by using and for loop. And then I display the value over here and show you how it look like. So this is what it is going to look like. We use a variable called v synonym s y n and I'll display the value of this. If you simple display is without any property, this is how it look like. You display all the member one by one. I should have commented this first. I'm going to comment it, save it, and run it again. So you see all the word nets of synonym of good. But is this the way we want to display? We want to display all the synonym in a simple array in a simplified way. That's not the way it's supposed to be displayed. So I want to collect only name right not all it is like an array so i use a nested for loop within the same I use another for loop 
and I'm going to read all the member one by one. For that, I'm going to use a lemmas function over here. So I need to retrieve all the value by using lemmas. And we browse it through a variable called L, right? So as you see in this example, given a collection of similar word is called lemmas. And therefore, I'm going to browse through each member one by one. And within this, I want to display on the name. So lemma dot, there's a property called name. Let's display this property and see what happened. So this was, this was my previous output. And now I'm going to have a new output. This will retrieve only the synonym of a given word. You see, this is how we are finding. I supposed to be commenting this. So that we see exact meaning. So good, honest, undecomposed, unspoiled, all these names are being shown. And I want to append this value into my array. So when I process it, did I process it? This is what I'm getting, right? Now let's put this into an array. So rather than displaying it, I'm going to append this into an array. Your array name dot append method dot append and I'm going to append the name of it L dot which is an object of lemmas dot name right so we keep appending because this method also return antonym so I like to differentiate antonym and synonym and therefore I'm going to use a function over here let me close it correctly I'm going to use if the given member is antonym so there's a method called L dot antonym. I can use antonym method. This method is a Boolean method written true and false. If this condition is true, I'm going to append this into another array called antonym array, array underscore antonym dot append. And same way, I'm going to display antonym. So I use a function over here, antonym. And this is basically written multiple values. I want to retrieve label zero member only or label or zero array index dot name. So if I don't display this, I can show you how it appear like. If you display directly, then the output, the way you get an output probably you don't want to see that way. So I display this value without applying name and this is going to be output. Let's save this, run it. So I'm, I have two array, synonym and antonym. I'm going to display over antonym over here without name. So let's see, is this the way you wanted the way you, the way you wanted to see the output? Take a little time to process. See, you're getting an antonym, but not exactly this way. So I want to retrieve this value. This is zero or index number zero, assuming it is an array. I want to read this only. Therefore, I use zero dot name method. So lemmas return this. That's it. So I'm going to comment it. And finally, I'll display both the output in an array. So I want to display outside of this loop. Therefore, I change the indent and display array number one. I use a set method which makes it which convert it to set and easy to read although you can display without set as well you can use with set and without set and compare the output and i find it with set we can clearly differentiate between synonym and antonyms that's it save it and run it this is your final code piece of code and I use print at various level to help you understand step by step how it is going to process. So let it run and that's it for today. In a subsequent example, I'm going to pass this all value as a parameter. We'll integrate with Django and uh, we'll create a nice user interface through which we can pass this value. In a subsequent example, we would automate the whole process and we do resume analytics. So look at look at this. This is an output. This is set one, which say or antonym, synonym. Sorry, and the second part is antonym.
So antonym of good is bad, badness, evil, ill, and so on. This is such a nice and simple code which help you to figure out synonym of antonym for given word. That's it. You can download this code and this PPT from our blog or, or from our website. So this is our website URL www.bsbtrainings.com and thank you for watching this video.